Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to be talking about today is really more of a, a learning process that I've been through. And uh, not necessarily happy with where we've arrived at the end of that learning process, but I wanted to take you along with me so you don't make a lot of the same mistakes I did. <laughs> so what I'm going to be talking about is uh, tabbed Marionette views and routing with scopes. So what we're looking at here is a tabbed view. Um, so uh, I work at about.me. We make uh, a product that lets you make a one-page website all about yourself. And uh, you plug in your bio and all your interests and everything. And we've over the past course of the past year, we've been migrating the whole product piece by piece uh, to Backbone and Marionette. And the last big push of that uh, is our new editor interface, which is going to go live next month, hopefully. So uh, what we wanted to do uh, in various uh, in situations, we wanted to be able to display Marionette views in a tabbed interface. Um, you know, we wanted to have a sort of a smart layout view that would automatically manage a region for us and provide navigation to throw a bunch of views into that region automatically and show the user where they are, or which, which particular view they're looking at. We wanted to be able to uh, enable or disable individual tabs dynamically. So here's an example of that. I'm just sending a little radio command to the top level view, and it's hiding that routing tab. Um, we wanted to be able to nest tab views. Uh, we didn't really want to do it infinitely. We actually only do it like two or maybe three levels deep. But we figured once you go two levels, you might as well make it work infinitely. I mean, if you look at like the way composite view works, for example, you can nest composite views infinitely. So we were kind of following that model. We wanted to be able to reshow the last active tab when returning to a tabbed view. We wanted to be able to track history and respond when the user clicks the back and forward buttons. And uh, in, in particular, we wanted to be able to link directly to any tab in the view hierarchy. So that in our emails, for example, we can link users directly to some part of the, the interface. So let's look at the, the anatomy of a tab view. Uh, first of all, who, who here is familiar with layout view? OK, good. And then who's uh, familiar with a behavior, a marionette behavior? OK, so a marionette behavior is a way to um, encapsulate a given bit of functionality and then in a way that you can plug it into any view. And so you can sort of have a separation of, uh, you know, separate a very specific uh, behavior or task that you want any view to be able to do. So what we've created is a tabs behavior that gets plugged into any layout view. Uh, the layout view provides a tab region. So this is the tab region here. And the view also provides a nav region optionally. You don't have to have navigation. But if you provide a nav region, then the behavior will, will do some stuff for you. And that nav is just a collection view that shows a tab for uh, each view that you, that you want to show in the, in the tab set. Uh, by default, it creates a, a button bar, but it also has a, we also created a, 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 menu bar, a menu view that creates a drop down instead of these tab buttons. And it's also built in such a way that you can plug any view you want for custom navigation. And then it's, it's CSS agnostic. So you can make it look any, any way you want. Uh, each tab is just a model. So a, a tab has an ID, uh, in this case, a banana. You give it a label, which is used in your navigation. You define a view that is associated with that tab. And that's a class, not an instance. Um, you can also define some view options that will be passed to that view. And you can set the tab to visible, true or false. And then the tabs behavior does the rest. You pass a list of tabs to the behavior, and the behavior converts that into a collection. Um, let's see. So and when you click a tab, the behavior uh, grabs the view class for that tab, creates a view instance, shows it in the, in the, uh, the tab region, marks it as active, and then the nav view responds by making that tab look different than the others. So just some quick examples in our own product of tabbed user interfaces. This is our editor interface. That's my baby. 
his name's Elijah. Uh, and this, this editor interface is um, a tabbed view. And then it has a series of tabs inside of it. And you see as I click through this, it's tracking my position by changing the URL. And if I click the back button, it just takes me back to where I was. Um, another example on, well, this is an internal page. We have a little playground where we can try out different user interface ideas. And the tabs on this page are managed with a drop down. Uh, and we have, this is our About Us page, and it has a Jobs page. And then inside that Jobs page is another tab set for each of the, the jobs. This, this actually might be old, so don't get any ideas. Uh, we, we are hiring, but I don't know what we're hiring for yet, or at the moment. This is just running on my local machine, so these might not be our current openings. And again, as you click through, it tracks your, your, your state. And then one other uh, instance I want to show you is our share page has a tab set. And the nav on that page is a composite view instead of just a collection view. And that composite view provides some left and right buttons. And the tab set is set to wrap around, so you can just sort of click through here infinitely. And the way that works is it's just triggering next, previous on the view, and the behavior responds to that event by showing the next tab in the list. OK. So that's tabbed views. Um, but in order to, to route and get directly to any view through a, through a single URL, um, we have some, some work to do. So uh, let, me, let me do a quick review of how I understand routing typically to work in Backbone. And I, I, you know, I'll give a caveat that I've, I've really only worked on one application. And uh, so I don't have a wide experience of routing in different applications and different scenarios. But this is what, what my understanding of routing in Backbone. So typically, you'll start an app. You instantiate some routers. The router adds some routes. And routes are just parts uh, that look like URLs, basically, that point to different uh, parts of your application. You start Backbone history. Backbone history finds the most recently added route, which matches the current URL. So if the URL matches some route, it will fire the handler for that route. And then your app will respond to the, to the URL. While your app is running, your user navigates around the app. You uh, update the URL to reflect your current app state by calling router.navigate with some URL that you want to uh, add to the history. And then when the user clicks the back button, the URL is going to change back to what it was previously. And that's going to trigger a history event. And again, Backbone History is going to find the most recently added route that matches the current URL and calls its handler so that you, that, that uh, URL change will trigger some event in your app. So some limitations that we ran into is that routes created after uh, history has started, uh, they, they're not automatically triggered even if they match. So you can create a router uh, that has a route that matches the current uh, the current uh, URL in the browser, but it might it won't be triggered. Um, and you can avoid that by just creating all your routers before you start history. But that, that didn't work for us, and I'll, I'll get into why that is. Um, route handlers must be capable of handling uh, different states. So for example, if a user logs out, uh, all your routes that require authorization have to behave differently. So if a route is no longer valid, why not just remove it? and not respond to that URL anymore. Um, uh, but but uh, unfortunately, there's no way to do that. There's no prescribed way to remove a route from backbone history. It's just a list of routes. And once they get added, there's no API for removing them. And there's also no way for a URL to trigger more than one uh, route event directly. There are ways, but. Uh, not strictly within, within Backbone Router. So uh, what we need is a way for a single URL to be handled by different parts of the application. So for example, we want the top level view to respond to the first part of the URL, ignoring the rest. So that's top level view. In this case, we're looking at a URL that says routing slash needs. So we want the top level view to, to uh, load the tab indicated by that first parameter, which is routing. So that tab can then load its own set of tabs 
and show the tab indicated by the next parameter in the URL, and so on. So we have our whole viewer hierarchy uh, represented in the URL. So our solution to this problem was to break the URL into parts. And we're just doing this conceptually. We're not dot splitting or anything like that. Um, but we, we think of the URL in parts, and those parts we call scopes, uh, similar to function scopes in JavaScript. And then we, create a, a, we created a special router that is designed to operate within a given scope. And I'll explain what scopes are more specifically in a minute. And then each tabbed view creates its own scoped router. And when a tab view is closed, we destroy its router and all its routes go away. When you reopen that tab view, its router is recreated and its routes are back. So you're dynamically creating and destroying routes. So let's look at what, what I mean by scopes. So each level in the view hierarchy is a scope. So this example we have, this is the URL we're looking at now, slash routing, slash solution, slash scopes. So the first level, our, our, our scope is actually an empty string. It's just nothing. Uh, the root level scope, we represent that with an empty string. And the parameter to that scope is routing. So again, the top level view is going to load the routing tab. Then that routing tab, or then that tab loads its own tab view, which has a scope of routing. And it receives a parameter solution. So it loads the solution tab. And then here's where uh, it, get, it becomes a little clearer that we're not just splitting on the slashes or anything. The, the scope is actually from the root to any given point uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the, the hierarchy of the URL. So this, this third level scope is routing slash solution. And the parameter is scopes. So um, let's see. So let's look at, at creating a scoped router. Um, so it, our, this router is just a subclass of marionette.approuter. I'm, I'm not showing the actual router code here. I'm just showing how you would create, how you would instantiate it. Um, but the main difference is that we define a scope. Um, and that scope defines uh, the, the, you know, the, the prefix for all routes in, in that router. Um, another nicety is that the scope can just be a variable. So for example, you could use a username as a scope and then define a bunch of routes inside that username scope. And uh, you wouldn't have to, you know, it's not easy to do that in a, in a hash like this. But if the, if the, the, the scope is defined dynamically, then, then your routes can be uh, much simpler to define. And then, you know, here we have the handlers for those routes. Uh, but when we, when we use a tab behavior, all this is done for us automatically. The tab behavior creates its own router and does, does, does the work of creating the router for us. So um, let's look at that. So here we're importing a tabs behavior class. We're defining some views for each uh, tab. And those are in, you know, external files. Uh, we're creating a layout view. And that layout view is going to create a couple regions for us. And those regions can be named and classed to anything you want. Uh, the important thing is that they exist and that you, uh, you pass them to the behavior in this next chunk of code here. So this is where we define our, our, the options for our, behavior and the op our beha behaviors and the options for each behavior. Um, there's a couple of ways of defining a behavior. In this case, we're using a behavior class. Um, if, you, if you read the docs on behaviors, there's two ways of, of telling the, the, uh, the layout view which behavior you want. Uh, but we're passing it a region for the tabs to live in. We're also passing it uh, a nav options glob. And in there, we're passing a region. Um, you can also pass a view and view options in there if you want to do custom navigation. And then we pass it a list of tabs, which get converted into a collection by the, uh, the behavior. You can also create a collection and pass it, pass a collection. But we find the, this uh, literal, object literal syntax to be uh, sufficient. And then again, you define the scope that gets used for that tab set. So uh, let, I just wanted to go into a little bit of what happens when you create one of these scoped routers. Uh, if backbone history has already started, the router, the router checks its own routes to see if any match the current URL. 
Um, that means we can create routers anytime we want in the lifecycle of our app. If backbone history hasn't started yet, then the router starts it for us. And that means we don't have to worry about starting history, we just create routers. Um, I'm not necessarily recommending that pattern, but that's what we're doing right now, and uh, we're, we're going to see how it works out. <laughs> uh, the, way that the only re way that this will work, though, is if all your routers are smart in this way, that they're capable of starting after history has started. So I'm going to reload the page here and, and explain, um, again, what's happening. So when I reload the page, it's going to, it's going to see this URL. The first, route, the first router is going to load, load routing. The next one's going to load, load uh, the solution tab. And then finally, uh, initialize will load, right? And that just all happens automatically, views creating views, or view controllers creating view controllers. Um, the router also has uh, some changes to the route method. Um, and uh, what it does is it basically, it's basically this, the same. When you create a route, it gets added to an array um, called backbone.history.handlers. Uh, the one difference is that we add an additional property, which is a reference to the router that owns the route. And what that allows us to do is to remove our routes later. And we'll see why that is important in a minute. Uh, and then another thing that we've modified in the default behavior for our router is the navigate method. Our navigate method, uh, it's, the navigate method is used to update the URL when you want to add a new state to the browser's history or to replace the current state. So with a scoped router, we don't have to set the, URL, the whole URL. We just set the, the fragment that we care about. Uh, for example, the ID for the current tab in a tabbed view. So when I change from here to here, the router is just, just uh, routing the, the, the ID navigate. Uh, and the router automatically prepends the, uh, the, scope, the scope to the history fragment and passes that to backbone.history.navigate. And the, scalp, the, the router also automatically figures out if the URL, URL should add a state or if it should replace the current state. So say, for example, if I go to, hello, oh, hello, oh, what's happening? Everybody come over here. <laughs> where, where, where? I don't know why it does that. Want to use my laptop or? Well, we'd have to, to start the app again, you know, download it and everything. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Well, I can just talk through it really quickly. It's, I have two, 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 uh, two slides left. So it automatically figures out if the, the, the URL you're, you're saving is, uh, should be adding to the state or if it should be just replacing. So for example, if I go to slash routing and it wants to load its first tab, it's going to add the ID of that first tab to the URL, but we don't want to add a new state to the history. So when they click back, they don't end up just in a, in a back button circle. So in that case, we replace the, the state automatically. Uh, when the tab view closes, again, we destroy that router and all its routes go away. And the reason that is important is because of the way that routes are matched internally in backbone history. There's this list of routes and the, the, when they're added, they're unshifted. So um, the most recently one that matches will win, basically. So if you have a bunch of routes that are you know, full URLs, routing slash solution slash navigate, and then, uh, but that navigate view is no longer visible, for, exa uh, for example, then uh, that route can interfere, basically. <laughs> because it's no longer valid. And so if we get rid of those routers, then the, the next level in, in the route hierarchy will, will be the first one to match. And then it will re-instantiate and, and kick our whole view, view chain off down the, down the line. So um, I wanted to uh, you know, just give a, a word of caution. This is, is not a drop-in solution. It's something that we have kind of crafted and are still learning about. And we may end up doing something very different. Uh, if you want to try this, you can download this, this repo. 
Uh, I'm Pascal PP on GitHub, and the repo is called Scoped Router. And there's instructions there for trying it out. It's really easy. Um, but this solution does require some monkey patching to backbone history and Marionette app router. And it's built for a, you know, a pretty specific uh, use case. Uh, and also, there's a lot of other interesting work uh, happening with this. There's a project called backbone.subroute, which does a similar, uh, a similar thing of scoping, scoping routes. And then uh, a couple guys on the Marionette core team, uh, James and the James Kyle, are doing some interesting work on routing that uh, you should check out. <laughs>